And welcome to our community. Susie Thomas here with you this morning, visiting with Dee Grossman, who is the executive director of the Tuscarawas County Convention and Vi- Vi- Visitors Bureau. <laughs> That's a mouthful. It is. I'm so used to saying say CVB. Well, yeah, but somebody will say, well, what does CVB stand for? Right. Yeah. Try spelling bureau. That's even more confusing. Oh, golly, not, <laughs> not this early. Convention and Visitors Bureau. Very good. B-U-R-E-A-U. Very nice. Thank you. Very good. Thanks. Well, Dee, it is just delightful <laughs> to have you here, and I know you are one busy, busy lady. So. Well, we're always busy, but the last few years have been particularly busy for us. Is there a reason? Why is that? Yes, actually there is. You know, in uh, 2013, 2014, we had an influx of visitors. They were coming off of the recession. We also had an influx of gas and oil well workers. So we had very few hotel rooms remaining in Tuscarawas County. The Stark County and surrounding counties as well. Now we hit into 15 and things start to slow down. Now, they've slowed down for a couple of reasons. One, Stark County added about 700 hotel rooms. That has changed. Gas and oil, we all know what's going on with that. Gas prices are low. Great for us. Bad for investors. So a lot of those folks have gone back home. So the last few years, we saw this coming. We knew it was going to occur. We've probably doubled our marketing budget which also means doubling our travel as well, because marketing, while it is regular stuff like visitors guides and ads and magazines, it's also travel shows. Uh, this last couple of weekends, we've been to the Toronto Golf Show, Cleveland Golf Show, we've got Pittsburgh Golf Show coming up. We've been to American Bus Association, National Tour Association, Heartland Travel Showcase, and about three others I can't even name right now. And that's all from the beginning of January. I don't think that crosses our mind. We think <laughs> of someone like you as drawing people, come see us, come see us. We don't think of you going out and being on the road. Well, how do we get people to come here? There's particularly tour operators. Particularly golfers. Okay, because tour operators, they're already working on 2017 and in some cases 2018. So for us, we have to go to them and say, here's what we have. Here's our stuff. Uh, In particular, one of the travel shows, we actually set up a five-booth area, which is about 50 feet. Our attractions were there. You know, we had Trumpet and the Land characters dressed up. We had, you know, a railroad festival people dressed up. So it's a visual kind of a mini museum look right there at the travel show. Tour operators walked by and went, oh, yeah, I know where you are. we got to get back down there. Oh, yeah. So it's a reminder. Same with the golf shows. Everybody knows where Tuscarawas County is, but let's just remind you how great our golf courses are. And come on down. So, so you really do a show on the road. They're seeing a mini museum when they win. On occasion, that is correct. And it's so visual because there's so much. I think people forget, oh, my goodness, yeah, there's all this to do. Uh, we have more museums and attractions than most any other county in the state of Ohio. First of all, are people just shocked and stunned to find that out? That you know, And basically, do you also, well, you're Tuscarawas County, but you're in your homes county, and there's that Amish country draw as well. Well, we partner with every, we'll partner with anybody. We partner with the Hall of Fame. We're working on the Republican National Convention up in right. Cleveland because we're going to get some of that. Well, uh, the Hall of Fame weekend, you know, we're going to get some of the Holmes County, Cambridge, Guernsey County. I mean, we'll partner Carroll County, the lakes. We just did a big show where we were the, the lake region with Carroll, you know, Stark, and, and Tuscarawas County. So we'll sell anything that people want to buy. And things are cyclical. You know, history is a great sell, but you have to sell it a different way sometimes mm-hmm. because people don't always want to know about the history. They want to have a hands-on experiential time. Of history. So rather than go through a museum and see all the old furniture and hear about all the old stuff, you know, today you could be greeted at one of our museums with a fully costumed interpreter in character, doing first person, and you believe that you're back in the 1930s or the mm-hmm. 1940s, and you're fully immersed in that time period. And when you get done with the tour, you're like, oh, that was so cool. Like I travel. learned so much, like time travel. That's right. You're, you really do. It's it really makes it all come alive, doesn't it? It does. And it makes and, and you learn it. without knowing that you're learning. Yes, and it's not just dates and times and places, but you're getting to know yeah. people and what people were like back in the day. And and it just seems like oh, we had so much in common. And as you say, we're learning from. If we don't learn from other people's mistakes, we are bound to make them ourselves. Well, and we learn from their experiences as well. You know, when you're greeted at the door by a housekeeper with a Welsh accent because she immigrated here, you forget that we're all here. (laughs) We're all here, and this is what we are. 
a shared experience. Yeah. You you mentioned Hall of Fame weekend. I always thought it was so intriguing that the Mennonite quilt sale takes place the exact same weekend, and I've got it's it perfect. Yeah, it's, it's a perfect <laughs> perfect partnership because a lot of the women don't want to do football stuff. They're like, what can we do? <laughs> And I, I've got to confess, I thought, why would they, why would they want to have it the same weekend? But I went down there and thought, oh, these people don't care that there's a football thing going on it right now. Perfect. It was crammed. Yeah. There were so many people there. It was and, and it is beautiful. Yeah, it's a great great event. Amazing. Well, let's let's talk about some of the things that are permanent. Uh, that you deal with. Permanent. Uh, well, nothing in tourism is permanent. <laughs> but there's some things we can count on. We know we will also always be able to go to the Warther Museum and so forth. So tell us some of the things well, that we can always count you on. You know, history history is permanent. You know, and we learn from our history. The only way that we can look at our future is to know what our past was. And when you come down to Tuscarawas County, one of your first stops should be Fort Lawrence. You know, we were the westernmost frontier during the Revolutionary War. There were the 112 men that died there. Yeah. It, the, the, the time was so bad, they built the fort in November. Okay, now imagine a November like we've had a January, February. It was snowy, it was cold, they had no food. They were hand-digging holes mm -hmm. for, for fence posts. It got so bad that they boiled their own moccasins, which were made out of deer hide at that time. They ate poisonous mushrooms. They were so desperate for food, but we forget. So we have to remember why we are here, why this community, this corridor is important. There's, there's good reasons why Interstate 77 is here. The canal came through this way. The river came through this way. Those are all points of commerce. So if we don't remember our past, how do we appreciate what tomorrow could bring? So, you know, Fort Lawrence and... Janaton Hutton, where the massacre occurred. Shundran Village. Shundran Village, Zora Village. By the way, Zora Village just got its National Historic Landmark status. Wow. Big celebration coming up in May. Mm -hmm. look, look for some details on that. Uh, there are only 74 National Historic Landmarks in the state of Ohio. Tuscarawas County has two. Two of them right now. Amazing. It's a process. It's a three to ten year process to, to go through the National What's Park the other one? Denison Railroad Depot Museum. Wow. Again, busiest a site for troop trains during World War II. 1.2 million servicemen came through there. Were served free coffee, free donuts, and free sandwiches every day on their way from Columbus to Pittsburgh. There's about 100 miles. Now they have the Polar Express, and you get to ride on a train. Yeah, yeah we have so much cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so much. It's just mind-boggling. If you're taking notes, I mean, there's not going to be a quiz later, but... Oh, well, there might be a quiz. <laughs> okay. that, that would be good, too. You've got special events coming up. You mentioned in May. We want to get that on well, the calendar. Well, we used to have special events starting in January. I think yeah. the only weekend we don't have a special event, maybe, is the second week of January. So if you're thinking of an event, that would be the weekend to pick. You know, we've, we've done... We do benefit events all through the winter. Our special events start in April. Our railroad festival, clay festival, uh, Italian American fe I mean, the Dover Fest. There are, we have 300 events and festivals. So completely, I can't even get them all in this list. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you'd have to go to our website where we have all of those events listed. That's got to be a tough job for you because I see you holding this beautiful brochure. How do you decide what to whittle down and put in a brochure? Well, we don't decide. We, we let our attractions decide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is, we, we send this out for free, but anybody who wants to be in it, there, there's a nominal fee. Um, so we probably have only 60 events listed in here of the 300. Just scratching yeah, the surface. Just scratching the surface. So I've got to ask, Dee, you must absolutely love your job. <laughs> Tell us a little well, bit. Well, there are that. days. There are days <laughs> when we don't. <laughs> but for the most part, you know, this has been um, a job of evolution. When I started 30 years ago, <laughs> and this is a funny story because we were located in a different facility. 800 numbers weren't that common 30 years ago, and they weren't common enough that they could ring on a regular phone like we, like we have now. You know, now when the phone rings, we don't know if they're calling on the 800 number or our regular 330 number. Right. But back then, 30 years ago, we had a red phone. I don't know why we had a red phone, but we called it the bat phone. <laughs> so when, when the phone was ringing, we knew it was a visitor, and everybody's like scrambling to answer the phone because we knew it was a visitor. We didn't have websites. We didn't have internet back then. 
So we did a visitor's guide, but it was small, and we didn't have a lot of participation, didn't have a lot of events, didn't have a lot of hotels to support. So, yeah, things have changed over 30 you, years. And you've been there throughout those changes. Yeah. You do your job completely different today. Completely differently. You know, so much of what we do is online. We do a lot of social media, obviously, who doesn't? Uh, but our website is our biggest sales tool. We still give out 100,000 visitors' guides. That's one thing that hasn't changed. In fact, this year we're probably going to run out again. We ran out again last year. Uh, but we do a lot of traveling. Um, the way in which we sell has changed. We don't just sell a museum. We sell the experience that you will have when you go to that museum. So when you go to the Denison Railroad Depot Museum, yes, you can just take the regular tour and walk through and see stuff and read. But you could also be greeted by the doctor in the hospital car who talks about World War II amputations and how deadly they could they were. I mean, so you're immersed in that time period. So we've been working on that immersion experiential tourism for about five years now. Wow. I, yeah, that is just amazing. So even if you have toured these museums in your lifetime, it's worth coming back because it's a different experience. It's a different experience. Well, well, we've heard from people from a food-based that they don't want to just see what they're going to eat. They want to see how that food is prepared. Where is it grown? Farmers markets are very popular right now because people want to see where the lettuce is grown, where the tomatoes are grown, how you do that. So we're getting, again, it's about history. If you don't know where you were, you don't know where you're going, which is kind of cliche, but in tourism, it's particularly true. And totally true. Yeah. It's, you're kind of boiling this down and making it clear for us, but is there a way that you can describe your mission as the well, mission? As a simply year? put, we want people to come to Tuscarawas County and spend their money. Yeah. I mean, we're an economic development organization. We want you to come down and experience our history and our culture. And we want you to spend your money, and then we want you to go home, and we want you to tell your friends and family how great of a time you had. That, that's pretty much the mission. But bigger than that, we want you to experience the history so that you can have a, an appreciation of, of where we have come from. There, there are layers to that mission, right? There's a lot of layers. <laughs> that, and it's got to be... Um, Part of it, it has got to be funding all of this because you yeah. can visit so many of these places for just a nominal fee, if anything. So uh, tell us, how are you funded? Well, thank you for asking. Uh, almost every convention and visitors bureau in the state of Ohio is funded with lodging tax dollars, which means when you come down to Tuscarawas County and you rent a hotel room, you pay the fee, you pay a sales tax, which goes to the state. We all know about that. Then there's a lodging tax. For the most part, it's 3%. That's added to your room rate. That goes um, back to us. Uh, in the last few years, uh, when I first started uh, 30 years ago, the budget was about uh, $24,000 for everything, including my salary, everything, wow. insurance, phone, everything. We're up to about a half a million dollars, which really isn't very much if you think about it. So that wasn't all just a, a raise for you? No. <laughs> Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> no. <laughs> but no. No, we're spending about two, well, we're spending about 200000 a year on marketing and advertising. Yeah, yeah. So, Yeah, and, well, when you're talking about these more elaborate ways of marketing, to be able to take uh, costumed characters out on the road, and you're putting yeah. them together, like, multiple tables. and, and Yeah, and those are thousands and thousands of dollars. Got to be. Yeah. Um, but, no, no, but no, people think that marketing, because it's on the Internet, is free. That is completely a false <laughs> Thank you. false belief. Developing a website, keeping that website up to date, monitoring social media, putting things out there on social media, that's a person's job. That's a full-time job. And even paid social media. Paid well. social media is a full-time job. So, you know, we're, we're spending thirty to $50,000 a year on that free marketing of, of the Internet. Website development, very expensive. you got to check it every day. Make sure there's no linkages broken. You've got to pay for hosting. Yeah, so th those those free internets are not free. But isn't it just the greatest invention ever for people <laughs> who do what you do? Well, there's lots of great inventions. I mean, the telephone was a great invention <laughs> for what we do. Good start. Particularly cell phones. Uh, no kidding, yes. So um, so funding then is basically tax-based. Correct. Don't, you don't hold fundraisers. No, we don't have to hold fundraisers. Mm -hmm. No, we help other organizations with fundraisers by donating door prizes and things like that. And some of our attractions have a lot, well, most museums, museums do not operate on admissions. It's absolutely impossible. So they do a lot of fundraising. Well, and, and that is what's so great is that so much of this is either free or nominal. 
so that a family can Well, most of our events are free. No, something like the Alive concert, you pay an admission. But for the most part, our, our events are free. You have to buy your food and everything, but yet they're free. A lot of our attractions are pretty reasonably priced, uh, anywhere from, you know, $2, $3, 4 up to maybe 15 or 20 if it's a, a hands-on experiential tour. Very cool. Well, uh, I know you've got plenty of stories. We're going to be back with uh, more with Dee Grossman after these words. You're listening to Our Community.